with this guy. Even with two points now deducted from his score, Galata continued his onslaught. That's a knockdown. That's another knockdown. Galata received another warning in the sixth round. And now Eddie Cotton's going to warn Galata for rabbit punching. Late in the ninth round, he went back to it again. And the uh, last two was a combination way below the belt. Low blows, and down goes Bo again. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. He's calling that's the it. fight that's over. That's it. That's it. That's it. He's disqualified the ladder again. He was willing to fight the hands down. But because he's an idiot, he got himself disqualified. He didn't want to be there. I felt sad for him. I felt sad for Riddick. I felt sad for us that a potentially glorious event had once again become this strange atrocity. Ludova, give us your assessment of the fight. Well, I don't know what to say. I really don't. I'm going to sit down with Andrew and say, look, do you want to be a fighter or don't you want to be a fighter? If you don't want to be the fighter that fights in the ring and fights the right way, then you better, you better go look for a championship of a tough man contest in a bar or something like that because it's not going to happen. Andrew Galata would have three more chances at redemption. Against Lennox Lewis, Galata would be KO'd in the first round. Against Michael Grant, Galata would quit during the 10th round. You want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight? He said no. He said he didn't want to fight. And after two rounds with Mike Tyson, Galata quit the fight and boxing. When I was trying to put that mouthpiece in his mouth, I should have shoved it up his ass. I said to him, Andrew, don't do this to yourself. And then he didn't want to know nothing. He pushed me away. Whatever demon it was that forced Andrew Galata to do those things in the ring, he couldn't stop it. He had no control. Currently, Galata lives in Chicago and is facing criminal charges for a melee outside a hotel in Poland in November of 2002. For Bo, who took way too many clean blows in big fights, his days as a fighter were also over. His reflexes and responses weren't quite what I would have expected, especially somebody that's 28 years old. If you look at Riddick's speech pattern from the Holyfield Bow era, you underestimate my, my stamina, my punching power. You know, Bert Cooper knocked him down the floor in the road, I knocked him down. To the Bow Galata era, it's totally different. I mean, you look at like this new guy, but Galata is somewhat, you know, fresh. He hasn't had as many fights, so. Therefore, he don't get his time, but as soon as the uh, fatigue set in a little bit, that's when he started hitting me low. One of the major hallmark symptoms of chronic brain injury is personality changes, aggressive behavior, uh, problems in someone's personal life. One month after the second Galata fiasco, Bo made a strange decision. Well, I'm not retiring, and I'm not going to announce my next fight until after I do something else. And that's something else is joining the United States Marine Corps. For a guy who had trouble training for a fight worth tens of millions of dollars, how the hell is this guy going to go to Paris Island and wake up for Reveille? Bo's first day of Marine Corps training was February 18, 1997. He would be a civilian again just three days later. I didn't expect the drill instructors to give me such a hard time. Okay, Returning to civilian life, wasn't easy for Bo. A string of domestic disputes resulted in a separation from his wife, Judy. She left and took the kids down to North Carolina. I kind of felt like a part of me died. And what good was I? I got a call from one of Judy's nieces to say that Bo had come and he had taken the family. What people must understand is that what I did, I'm not proud of it, but I did it out of love. Bo pled guilty to interstate domestic violence and in November of 2002, was sentenced to at least 18 months in prison. In a sentencing hearing, his defense team claimed that injuries to his brain from boxing were partly to blame for his decision-making. This is a different Riddick Bow than that fresh, young, big bear of a guy who first fought Evander. You know what, God has a way of humbling you. And perhaps, you know, somewhere along the line I did something, or maybe I was someone snobbish and he wanted to bring me back down to earth. Riddick Bowe is a tragic figure in boxing. To become a champion and not to be able to deal with success and then to suffer some physical and 
probably mental damage, uh, his whole life falling apart. It doesn't get more graphic than that. Though he was only 29, these were Riddick Bowe's last two fights. In the first, he showed how the accumulated effects of his sloth had diminished his abilities. But in the second, he reminded us of the gallantry he had shown in taking the title from Evander Holyfield just four years before. Bowe fought with extraordinary courage, even as his career was vanishing round by round. Andrew Galata was just the latest of many to prove you need more than physical talent to become a boxing champion. Thanks for watching The Tale of Bo Galata. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.